Hey guys, today at GK Tech we're installing the rear brake line locker kit. Now, let's address the Australian elephant in the room. This is not Officer Dan, this is me, Johnny Caps, the dude Dan mentions at the end of every install video that we do. I wanted to give Dan a break on this one as this part correlates with something I hold so close to my heart. Burnout. Now listen, I get it. Everyone loves a burnout, whether it be victory burnouts, gender reels, or just straight up getting drunk with your buddies. We all love them, yes, but we don't like cooking our rear brakes, just like I did in the outro video that we have basically never changed. So, enter our line locker kit. As you can see, Zach is giving a wiggle on the screen now. This is how the kit will come, in a clean plastic sleeve with everything you need. Go ahead and lay these goodies out on the bench and we can start with the shutoff valve which is essentially the on and off switch and the thing you turn when you're ready to party. Now it's not that complicated, one way is full flow and your brakes will work as usual and the other way cuts the flow of brake fluid allowing only the front brakes to work. Next up we have the hull stainless steel banjo bolt with two copper washers to suit. This is to be fitted to the master cylinder which we will show you later obviously. And lastly for the accessories some black stealthy P clips to blend in and suit the black line and keep that sucker in its place. Now let's talk about the two lines you get. Both are longer than they need to be to suit all types of setups. One of the two lines will have a straight fitting on one end that goes to the shutoff valve and a banjo on the other which goes to the brake master cylinder. The other line also has a straight fitting that goes to the shutoff valve as well and then a 90 degree fitting on the other side that connects to the rear brake line block on the chassis rail. So, to summarize, we're pretty much putting a valve in between where the OEM hardline was that went from the master cylinder to the rear brake line block. Now, is this kit universal? Yes, it is. The reason it is is because we use the common Nissan brake line thread being M10 by 1, meaning if you have a car that has an M10 by 1 master cylinder and an M10 by 1 rear brake line block, then you, sir, can use this kit. Now, some GK knowledge. Every brake line that we make are made in-house from our Australian warehouse. They are all stainless steel hull fittings and we do everything from cutting, crimping and bagging and then we even get a kangaroo to send them out. And these lines also comply with ADR, DOT and TUV specs. But enough of the technical stuff, let's get into the install. Fun fact, this is actually my car. So, the first thing you need to do is drain the brake fluid from the master cylinder, and in this case we used a sucker. If you don't have the tools, you can use a super absorbent rag, and if the master cylinder needs it, give it a clean while you're there. Then you want to go ahead and loosen and remove the hard line from the master cylinder, then slide underneath and loosen and remove that same hard line from the rear brake line block on the chassis rail. Go ahead and get your favorite Allen key and remove the grub screw that holds the handle on. Pop the handle off and wind the locking nut off also. Now you need to work out where you want your shutoff valve to be. In my case, I wanted it in arm's reach, but also out of the way. So for me, this is a track car only. I was happy to drill a hole in the floor near the seat. Grab your favorite drill and drill that hole to suit. Slide back underneath and pop the valve up from the bottom to the top. Wind on the nut and then go ahead and tighten that top nut. Then get your handle that you removed earlier and tighten that grub screw. Now that the valve is secure, we can fit the brake lines. Fit the long line with the banjo end first to the master cylinder. Install the washer on either side of the banjo bolt and go ahead and screw that in and then tighten and torque that bolt to the specs shown on the screen. Go ahead and hop down under and secure the line along the body. For me, it's a track car only so I'm happy to secure the line to the chassis rail. Go ahead and whip those P-clips onto the line and screw them down. Now the rule of thumb is the more you secure the line the less flex you will have and the more responsive it will be. From there navigate and secure the line to where you have mounted the shutoff valve. Now the threads on the fitting that go into the line locker are NPT. This means that these fittings are tapered and they seal on the thread which means you need to use a high quality thread sealer when fitting them to the shutoff valve. Once you have your high quality thread sealer, go ahead and spread that love generously while making sure you apply an even amount on the thread only. Go ahead and screw that fitting into the shutoff valve and tighten that down. Then you want to grab the line that you just routed there, wind that onto the fitting and tighten that down also. 
Now while we're at the shutoff valve, we can start to fit up the second line. Go ahead and get your other fitting, spread the love across the thread evenly like we did earlier. Wind that fitting into the shutoff valve and tighten that down. Now grab the second line that we have in the kit, screw the nut onto that fitting and tighten that nut down also. From there, again, decide how much you still love your car and route the other line where you want it, but in the direction of the rear brake line block on the chassis rail. Again, fixing the line down with the supplied P-clips as much as possible. Now we opted for a 90 degree bend on this side to give you guys some more clearance. It is a swivel fitting. So again, to make your life easier, I would suggest holding the line where you want it and then tightening the nut down. Then you can hop up into the engine bay and fill the brake master cylinder with your favorite branded brake fluid. If you are unsure which fluid to use, you can check the brake master cylinder cap as it will reference what fluid it requires. Then finally, all you have to do is bleed your brakes as you normally would. Please make sure you have your valve set to open so the system can bleed properly. And guess what? You won't be like me in that top video and you won't cook your brakes and inhale all that brake dust in one sitting. Now have a voice to match the name. This is me at the top, I post once every six years, and Dan at the bottom who is currently living his best life. And for those chasing Easter eggs, Zach is in the bottom right corner. Although this guide was awesome, it is exactly that, a guide on how to install this kit. Meaning if you do not feel confident, I would suggest getting a professional to fit this kit for you. If you have any questions or concerns, or just generally want to talk about life, we are super active online, so you're always welcome to get in touch with us. This has been myself, Johnny Caps, with Rear Brake Saver Zach, alongside Officer Dan, who is here in spirit, with another GK Tech install video. Goodbye.